Welcome to the program. Today we're going to interview Henry Mukisa. Mukasa? Mukisa. Mukisa, I got it right? Yeah. Mukisa? Thank All you. right. <laughs> nice to have you here. <laughs> Thanks. I'm Dr. Gary Ansdell of uh, Hosanna Christian Fellowship, and this is uh, What's the Point? And I think uh, you'll be encouraged with this because actually his name means blessing. Amen. And I think you'll be blessed by uh, this interview of what's happened to him. Uh, from my understanding, uh, Charles Spurgeon, when he was 16 years old, began to preach in uh, the fellowship hall of his father's church. And eventually the fellowship hall had more people in it than his father's church. And he said, okay, you better run with this. You know, God's hand is on you. And uh, you were 16 oh, yes. when you started ministering in the body to actually teach, to yes. preach. Yes. And uh, from there, you've been in the ministry how long? It's now 18 years. 18 years. Yes. All right. So how did that all start for you? You, you, you raised in a real nice Christian home, everything going good, and, and everything, uh, you know, encouraged you to just walk right into the ministry? It was a little different. Uh, no, it was <laughs> actually the extreme <laughs> opposite. Okay. Yeah, because... Uh, we grew, I grew up in a, a religious family. Of course, my father, uh, I mean, occasionally would go to church, but um, he was not really that committed guy. I mean, he was, uh, yeah, he had his own issues, but uh, we thank God that he was my father. Yeah. And I had no, any other choice. But I remember uh, really when I was growing up, I was really very young, and uh, I'm one of the, uh, unfortunate guys uh, when compared to my siblings that my father had an accident and he was incapacitated so the life really changed mm -hmm. because at least he had a job and he would provide for us he provide for my mother was just a homemaker and when my dad had that terrible accident and uh, took many years in the hospital mm -hmm. actually he was even taken to the mortuary no. At some point, they thought he was dead. Then, when they went the next day to embalm his body, they realized he's still warm. They <laughs> rushed him to the ICU. <laughs> and uh, after some time, you know, he was uh, back to life, but with uh, a lot of complications. That's the last thing you want is for a doctor to say, oops. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's like, still alive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we thought he had gone. <laughs> so then, now in, in Uganda, it would be pretty common practice for the the people in that area to assume that this is a curse on your family and uh, exactly uh, exactly and that is a great stigma I really thought when I was growing up yeah. I would play with uh, other kids and then all of a sudden like we are playing soccer and maybe you score and as a mockery they would say oh that oh. is the son of the blind uh, of the <laughs> deaf guy of the other deaf oh. man Maybe oh. because it was literally interpreted to mean a yeah. curse that yeah. God was maybe punishing my yeah. father or my family. Yeah. So it was an incredible stigma. Yeah. And it is something that really put my spirit down and branded me like, you know, yeah. cursed yeah. and uh, unfortunate and literally nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Did it ever uh, get to the point where you were thinking, I might as well just check out because, you know, what's the use of living if this is my destiny? Oh yeah, I felt that. I remember when I started going to primary as a, a young kid, I'd look at my life, I'd look at myself, how I dress, and I dress poorly, I have no shoes, you know, I can't have a container. Other kids would bring in containers oh, yeah. uh, with eats and yeah. some juices, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. you know, I literally had nothing, yeah. uh, you know, I'm putting on rugs, yeah. uh, I have nothing. So I, I started realizing a difference. Yeah. I thought, okay, maybe, my parents must have committed a mistake. Mm. Uh, I'm a misfit. Uh, I'm unworthy. This life, you know, means yeah. nothing. Yeah. And I remember <laughs> some people had talked about people who committed suicide, like they took uh, kerosene. Uh -huh. uh, so I said, okay, that's a better way. So I went and also took some kerosene. And I literally, you know, I developed these suicidal ideas. Yeah. I wanted to check out, as you said. Yeah. But I took kerosene and in that yeah. so I started maybe to think of other avenues of uh, committing suicide right. but I remember you know as I was contemplating about that I took a walk to our small town mm -hmm. and here I met a group of people who were uh, uh, supposedly on an evangelistic mm -hmm. mission 
And all of a sudden, you know, the preacher uh, turned to me and, you know, it was a big crowd, but turned to my side and said, there is a young boy here. You know, you even, you think you're unworthy, you not fit, you want to commit suicide, but if you give your life to Jesus, mm. he's going to use your life. I see God, you know, he's going to prepare you to make you a great servant of God and take mm. you to great nations and all that. And I'm like, okay, probably there <laughs> must be someone else. Because you're talking about that some... was really, yeah. You know, like somebody will speak and you have to turn yeah, around yeah, and yeah. say, oh, are you speaking about my neighbor yeah, or yeah. somebody seated on the yeah. other front yeah. row or something? Yeah. So, but literally that spoke something like yeah. you know something resonated yeah. in my spirit yeah. and yeah. i'm like oh wow yeah. there is something happening yeah. let me yeah. draw closer yeah. Yeah. and uh, find out what is happening yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so i continued and at the end of the meeting he kept insisting there is a young boy here there is a young boy here so i looked around i took my time and all of a sudden i realized people understood that I'm the, maybe I'm the only person they are speaking <laughs> about. So yeah. like everyone started to look Can at me, please, they are, they are talking to you, could read their yeah. eyes, yeah. they are talking to you, please. <laughs> yeah. And then I, you know, I kind of, um, yeah. freaking out, I, I stood and, you know, I was uncomfortable, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. everyone would really realize yeah. that there is something that is going on yeah. in my life. And I remember as when I stood up, then one of the ashes, came and held my hand, said, I can help you, and then grabbed me to the front, and that's how I received, uh, uh, I received Jesus Christ. Yeah. Was, uh, personally, I, I assume, you're here, that gave you a different insight into your purpose and plan, so suicide was not an issue anymore. Oh yeah, it, it was really one thing I received from the Lord, that from that night, something new came to me yeah. it, but it was like a wave of peace mm -hmm. a wave of peace i experienced something tremendous you know a, a peaceful spirit uh, i felt really different and before we go any further uh the, the program is called what's the point mm -hmm. and i believe the, the point there was not only for your salvation but i also believe by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony you overcome yeah. the devil i'd like you to look into the camera and just invite anybody that's going through regardless of their age oh yes uh, that moment of thinking i i just want to check out i'm going to commit suicide they've been pondering it for some time mm. and to lead them to christ invite them to give their life to jesus amen thank you so much uh dr gary for this opportunity i i just want to take this opportunity on this uh, uh program what's the point and uh, encourage somebody. I know you're watching and you look at your life and you think you are worthless. There's no destiny, there's no point for you to live. Everyone has you know, rejected you, disappointments after disappointments. But we're here to speak life. We're here to encourage you that God is good and he has a plan and a purpose for your life. But you know, it takes you uh, to make a decision today that is going to cause a turnaround for your life, not just for your life, but for the greater things that God is desiring to do in and through your life. And right now, just you know, I just want you to surrender your life to Jesus and just pray with us this simple prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for loving me and for dying on the cross for me. Today, I surrender my life. Cleanse me with your precious blood and wash me clean. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life from today. I am yours. I am yours. Amen. Thank you. I encourage you to read John, the Gospel of John. Get a Bible. Uh, read the Gospel of John. It'll be a good uh, springboard for what you've just done to understand what Jesus has for you. Amen. Now, God obviously is, uh, from the beginning, has had something for you. And did that, uh, from there... Uh, how did that lead you into the ministry that you've been in, uh, in serving in the ministry? I mean, we're all serving in Christ, but yeah. in the sense of uh, to the to the people in that community, uh, for how long? Uh, it's now eighteen years, 18 years. and uh, you know I've, I had to go through different ranks yeah. or different you know uh, different ministries. Yeah. Definitely uh, the church, and uh, you know I started you know from low low ranks, you know helping out in the youth ministry, mm -hmm. children's ministry, 
And uh, time came after when I graduated from the Bible school, I was among the best uh, students in the Bible school. And uh, my directors actually recommended, they prayed for me, they felt uh, a call of God upon my life. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a time when I was contemplating to go to Europe and thought I would make a better life. Mm -hmm. So they intervened and told me, you know, Henry, we, we sense after this class, we sense that the Lord has a different path for you, but you have to align yourself to the will of God. And they prayed for me. And immediately during that time, there was an opening for me to go to Rwanda to start a Bible school mm -hmm. and start training mm -hmm. uh, leaders and pastors. Mm -hmm. I was very young. Yeah. And, uh, but of course I prayed and there were some struggles mm -hmm. here and there, but the Lord confirmed. So I now kind of moved into the, uh, into the missions. Uh, so I moved from my country and went to Rwanda uh, it was a different culture, yeah, different yeah, language, yeah. you know, different challenges. But the Lord was faithful. So I went. I didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. But uh, after some time, there is one thing that really moved my heart. I taught in this class and there was one elder, one old man who was maybe in his 70s. And he gave a testimony after the class. And he was, you know... Uh, he was crying and he gave a testimony and said, I prayed to God that before I die, mm -hmm. he gives me a chance to attend a Bible school. Mm -hmm. And he said, but I'm thankful to God. Thank you, my son, for saying yes to the call of God yeah. that you came to teach us. Yeah. I tell you, Dr. Gary, that, was, that is something, even up today, mm -hmm. it is something that keeps me going. Mm -hmm. I didn't remember I grew up from a life yeah. where I thought I was nothing, yeah. where nobody, you know, nobody believed in me. Nobody would say yeah. a positive word. Yeah. And when he said that, I remember I ran to the toilet and cried mm -hmm. because I couldn't imagine that, you know, I can be used of God to make a difference mm -hmm. in some way. And have life. an elder respect you and, and yeah, be taught and by you. Exactly. Yeah. And even to have that respect, it was a great compliment. But I also felt, you know, God was affirming me. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that kept me going yeah. because I was fearing I'm, I'm young, yeah. I'm teaching yeah. people with great experiences yeah. that I yeah. have. Yeah. So I continued on and from Rwanda, I raised uh, trainers. I went to Burundi. Oh. I started another Bible school and started training. So, and then I went to DRC Congo. So I, you know, would move around. Yeah. I would move from Rwanda to Burundi to Congo. And then from there, the Lord specifically spoke to me and said, I'm going to lead you back to your country so that you can uh, administratively mm -hmm. design like a system how you can coordinate these training centers. And then I also want you to start a church. Yeah. And it was very specific yeah. in the area of Entebbe. Yeah. I mean, a couple of things. One, I would imagine in all the areas, but especially in the Congo, your testimony alone would have a great effect because my understanding at least, so most of those in the Congo feel like they're less than people in other oh, yes. districts and they're looked down upon in oh, yes. many of the areas, right? So you go in there and say, Jesus can raise you up above all of that. Oh yeah, it's a Powerful. great it's a great testimony, Dr. Gary. I remember the first time I went to Congo, in where I was residing. Yeah. Of course it's an area that was affected by the volcano. So people in extreme poverty and uh, the life is really very hard. You take a bus up to some yeah. certain place and uh, literally even the roads were not well yeah, done because yeah, yeah. they, they, they are rocky. You have to carry your suitcase yeah. and walk yeah, some kilometers. That, yeah. And uh, one thing struck me and really caused me to fall in love with Congo. Like I was there and in that one week, there were three suicides. And then I, yeah, I, I asked yeah. the pastors, what is the problem? And they told me one case, the man didn't have the money. And the wife was demanding for him to buy food and groceries. So he didn't have what to say. Yeah. When they were sleeping, he hanged himself. Yeah. You know, another story Hopeless. like that. Hopelessness. So, but by the grace of God, you know, we are reaching out. And uh, the essence, the point as this yeah. program, the point is to reveal Christ, yeah. who is the ultimate hope. Yeah. 
that in every situation, you know, when we have a genuine encounter with Jesus Christ, with the love of God, yeah. we, we have, a, we, I mean, we get a different revelation of who we are and of our circumstances, yeah. and we are empowered to move on in God. Now, the ministry that you're involved in now, that you've just answered prayer for what the Lord was showing you, is to connect other uh, evangelical or teaching ministries together, and how's that, uh, explain that, what, what oh, do you mean by that, how's that? Oh yes, uh, what, the what, coordination, what I think was to draw up like a structure, yeah. because I was, uh, you know, I had different training centers, but I really had to sit down to design a structure to make sure we have a system mm -hmm. that can, I mean, that can keep things Do it all going. decently and in order. Yeah. Right. So yes. that's why I set up a regional office in Uganda. Yeah. I had to bring on all the trainers together and then make sure I draw up timetables, say, okay, I cannot be in all these places, mm -hmm. but you, you can be here yeah. at this time of the year, this time of the year. And, you know, so God literally took me uh, I would do still the training, mm -hmm. but now, you know, he raised me up to manage the trainers, encourage train the them, trainers, yeah. yeah, and train the trainers. Yeah. And that's what I'm also doing up to now. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm, I'm leading the church, but I'm also encouraging the trainers to spread out and the work is yeah. continuing. And, and how is it continuing? Like, wh where does it spread? How does it, is it still in the Congo? Is it in other areas? Where, where is it reaching out to? Uh, it is, it's spreading because in the Congo right now, we started with one training center in one city, yeah. but now we have, uh, uh, we are, we have over three training centers in different cities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In Rwanda, we have two training centers in Burundi, two training centers yeah. Yeah. Wow. in Uganda, over 10 training yeah. centers. So, uh, it is, it's the, by the grace of God, yes. but this is a work that is not like, uh, uh, it's not sponsored by anybody, yeah. but it takes the grace of God and also cooperation yeah. and sacrifices yeah. Yeah. Uh, of these trainers and yeah. also working with the, the local pastors yeah. where I explain to them the need for training. Yeah. Yeah. And then they can host a mobile training center. Yeah. Then we send somebody to train them. That's how we've yeah. been moving. And how, how's, because uh, I know there are pockets that are really, really dangerous with the, the Muslim world. Oh, yes. How has that affected the training centers and where you're going and, and to some extent what you're, what's being taught so they can defend the gospel? I mean, are you dealing oh. with all of that? Oh, yes. Uh, those challenges are eminent. Uh, in some places, we have received some resistances, mm -hmm. uh, but we continue to pray for God's covering. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it is intense, and we have to say, okay, maybe we, we, we will need some security, mm -hmm. extra, uh, extra yeah. security. Yeah. So some other times we have said, okay, maybe we can postpone the training in this area mm, wisdom, yeah. yeah and for the sake of safety and the yeah. life of our yeah. trainers yeah. yeah but uh, uh, most times it takes prayer it yeah. takes uh, yeah. faith it takes the yeah. grace of God yeah. but also wisdom yeah. yeah like especially in Congo there are areas where you know they are kidnapping people and yeah. all that so we say okay let's postpone here let's you mm -hmm. know maybe focus on an area that is relatively safer for yeah. our trainers and so things like that. So what is the direction what's for the future? What's the name of the ministry, by the way? Did, uh, uh, yeah, the name of the ministry is Cornerstone Missions Africa. Okay. So under Cornerstone Missions Africa, we have Cornerstone Community Church. Okay. For in uh, English, is it a C or a K? A C. Okay. Yes, yeah, C-O-R. Cornerstone. Cornerstone. Corner, cornerstone. Yes. Okay. Yes. I just want to make sure it's very clear. <laughs> yeah. Okay, because you have a little bit of an accent. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent English, so. obviously, but cornerstone. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, and what's the goal from where you're at? What's the vision for uh, what you're doing and where you're where you're headed? Oh well, that's an ex that's excellent. Uh, from where we are right now, uh, the goal number one, as far as the church is concerned. We want to uh, equip and empower the people to live uh, the fullness of Jesus Christ and to be a witness, to be a light, you know, to the world. But also specifically, uh, I feel a burden for the next generation. Mm -hmm. I feel a burden for the young children because I grew up in the same life. 
So four years ago, I started a school uh, to reach out to kids like yeah. me, yeah. to give them a hope, to affirm, and to give them a sense of yeah. direction. Yeah. And that's what uh, I'm doing even uh, wherever I get an opportunity to create awareness about that. These are kids from, uh, you know, bad mm. backgrounds have been abused they've mm. been trodden mm -hmm. on uh, they've been rejected I take them and right now we have over 300 kids uh, we are taking care of and we're trusting God to you know right so now you're doing the housing too as well as the education or or is it the education system that uh, we provides doing, for them as they come yeah, we are doing uh, the education but because we are limited as yeah. far as support is concerned yeah, yeah. There are those extreme cases where the kids will taken them okay. in, but the depends rest, on the, yeah, depend. But the, the the rest, those who have some guardians, we have uh, struck a deal with the guardians to help us accommodate them, with hope that as we trust God, because we're trusting God to buy land, and then build a school and be able to put up the hostels. Mm -hmm. So with that, we believe that we'll be able to keep them in school. And also buy and also be able to cultivate food mm -hmm. so that we can take care of them it's a process it's a journey yeah. but we are trusting God you know moving by faith you know step by step yeah. but that is uh, right now that is what has consumed my heart yeah. that is where I'm looking I'm looking at a church that can be relevant to the next generation yeah. now the church itself is it um, uh, I assume it is, but does it do evangelical outreaches into the community? Oh yes. Does it? How how does it function? I mean, some some churches are church. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And then <laughs> some are church. They, oh, they're yeah. they're reaching out and and community. And and no, so we, just, we where, are, where are you coming from? We are really we are really mission minded. Okay. We are really I'm mission simple, minded. Yeah. We reach out to the community. We reach out to the elderly. We reach out. You know, I tell people we are a community-oriented church, yeah. and it's not about the four walls. Yeah. It's all about revealing the life of Jesus Christ, yeah. and we are so uh, we are so thankful to God. Like, uh, it's a growing church. Yeah. We have limitations here and there, but uh, we have a program. Uh, it's called Revive Awakening. Uh, Revive Awakening in conventions. So okay. uh, every three every, uh, every month. I take off three days and I have a team from the church because mm -hmm. I've told to them that we are a mission-minded church. Mm -hmm. So we go to a certain area just to encourage yeah. other believers to oh. do the outreach, to encourage the yeah. leaders and pray with them and they come back. Oh, cool. So it's something that goes around the country. Yeah. And by the grace of God, you know, uh, we are seeing great breakthroughs mm -hmm. and keeping on to trust God. Yeah. Now, yeah. Are you married for... Yes, uh, um, I've been married for the last, we're about to make 10 years, and uh, we have two lovely children, uh, Esther and Alpha. Yeah. Yes. And um, the reality is, and I know this because, you know, if anybody's had children, is mm. you're, you're not only doing it for your outreach and everything else, but there's that part in your heart, there's so much of it is, you know, what are you leaving your kids? Right? What kind of a society, what kind of a church, what kind of a culture are you leaving them? Mm. And that can also be a driving force, I think, with you. That Oh, yes. You know, what, what you're providing for other kids, but there's your own family, too. You want them to have a you know, a godly life in a godly community. Exactly. Yeah. I believe uh, as we grow, you know, you realize that you you really want to leave a positive legacy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, even for the children, because I grew up from a different background. Yeah. But I want them to see the God I yeah. serve. Yeah. I want them to be a witness for this God who has transformed my life. But I also want to instill the values for them to know that we don't, we are not just living for our own selves. Yes. But we are living for something that is greater. Yeah. It's not about our pockets, but it's about the size of our heart. Mm -hmm. And I've always told my family that, you know, we don't have a lot. But we don't need to own the entire world. Mm -hmm. But God looks at our hearts. When our hearts are right and set on fire, you know, God will always help us and will always lead us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's those that would be able to support you in some way, or uh, I think your your uh, webpage will be on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, how 
how can they help you? What what can they do? Uh, Pair I know is a big part, but also oh, just is. the financial resources. What what are you uh, looking for that you're saying? You know, we're, we're trying to build this orphanage. We're trying mm. to do this or that. I mean, uh, how right. can they help? Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Gary. Well, uh, the biggest uh, right now, the biggest focus is to buy the church land, uh-huh. which is uh, thirty six thousand U.S. dollars. Uh, How many and, acres? And uh, it's over an acre, but it's okay. in Entebbe, so it's a prime area. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, the best way to support, uh, you can go, I mean, I have a PayPal account. Yeah. So I realize it's uh, very, very helpful. So uh, it is under uh, Cornerstone Community Church, uh, Cornerstone Community Church 3 at gmail.com. 3 at gmail.com. Yeah. Cornerstone Community Church. Community Church. The number 3. The number 3. At gmail.com. gmail.com. And you can also we, uh, visit our webpage, cornerstonemissionsafrica.org, and see the different things we're doing. And then, you know, you can maybe drop an email, and uh, I can give you more information even about uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, account where you can. Uh, deposit and offering or if you want a, a okay. de- tax deductible receipt I can you know tell you the partner organizations we're working with that working can, with Cornerstone yeah. in the US yes that can you know help you to write a tax deductible yeah I understand yeah. 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 Okay. well uh, what I'd like to do is just close in prayer and pray for you because you know the reality is that uh, there are a lot of people and they're great organizations they go mm. into a place they minister and they leave Mm-hmm. But when you've got an indigenous organization and a group, a ministry that has grown up in the area, understands it, and mm-hmm. then provides for it and outreaches, that's just, that's, that's to me where's the power, where the power is. Amen. Father, I, I pray for your continued blessings. Yes, Lord. The, the purpose and the plan that you have for him, the resources that he needs, as mm-hmm. well as the people, the disciples, the teachers, the facilities, just answering his prayers and the prayers of those that have worked with him to give exceedingly mm-hmm. abundantly above all they could ever ask or think. He has a vision, Lord. I know he's not going to perish. I know he, with this vision, Lord, you're going to lead him forward into the into the kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Well, this is uh, a uh, close to this program and, and the point of uh, growing up, evangelizing, sharing. Ministering, you've got it all, and, and I'm just so thankful that you've been able to, to come here with us. And Thank God you so bless much. you, and God bless you as you look for the kingdom in your life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television.